And the nice thing about being with a live audience, ladies and gentlemen, is that you can actually see real faces and real people and get real applause, because when you work on telly, you never get that, only uh, by some uh, maybe bad letters or good letters. I have this one word written on this card, and it says headsets. Um, and the word headsets uh, has a meaning because uh, right at the beginning we handed out a number of headsets for those who wanted to listen to uh, some of the German contributions early on. And it could just be that some of you might have still in their bags one of the headsets that they pocketed on the first day. Um, the organizers would be very appreciative of you just having a quick look into your bag, see whether you find one of those headsets, and please, on your way out, hand it to the lovely hostesses that are there. Um, Rita has already mentioned it. Um, we are having a conference uh, that is mirrored uh, in the web uh, straight away, sort of uh, a conference uh, that is uh, um, commented on whilst it is happening. So thank you very much, Jana, our Twitter lady, who's been working very hard uh, for the last couple of days. And uh, one of the nice things is that should you have, I mean, of course, you were participating, but should you have missed the beginning of um, Rita's uh, plan discussion round just now. You can still do that. Um, there are d diverse ways of doing it. You can listen to it in a couple of hours. You can see it. So um, everything is catered for. I see a number of people who have either returned or who have decided that they want to have the grand finish uh, to the grand conference. And ladies and gentlemen, we've had something very, very nice uh, accompanying this uh, uh, conference. We had something that was called Click. And of course, Click is just what these gentlemen are doing. And the lady, where's Cornelia? There she is, working very hard the last couple of days, uh, sort of giving us uh, a picture of the conference uh, as it was happening. But before the conference was starting, we had a competition, a worldwide competition. Could you please send us your pictures on how education is actually taking place on the ground? There were more than 300 photos in this competition. Then we had, uh, there were actually 60 countries, and we had lots of people voting on these 300 photos. On the whole, 10,000 people voted, and we got it down to a number of 10 finalist photos that you, ladies and gentlemen, actually judged throughout the last three days. I'm not quite sure, did you actually click on something? No. No, you didn't. Um, but many of you did. So of the 10 finalists, we actually have three award winners. And they are starting off with the third place. The DP DHL Teach for All India School in Mumbai, a photo made by Jake Reader from the US. And this is the photo that you, ladies and gentlemen, have decided is the third best photo in this competition, describing the way on a relatively old bench, this, uh, these young kids are actually working away and doing what we have been talking about, getting educated, getting some kind of knowledge. The second place is, I think, extremely impressive because it shows what's happening everywhere. Children teaching children. Not just on the internet, but really on the ground. So, Etisham Ahmad Farooqi, and I hope I've pronounced his name correctly, from Pakistan, has pictured this child teacher sharing with his mates what he has learned at school. And of course, now we're running up to the winner photo. And the first place is The Need to Know by Mamadou Gomis from Senegal. And I think many of us can remember that when we were kids, we did very similar things, like lie on the floor, have a book in front of us. However, that might have been our choice. Whereas this young kid, in Senegal might not have that choice. 
but he's learning, he's reading, he is working on this. So you see, I'm getting to the end of my cards, almost, not quite. We've been just talking about a lot of people that have been working very hard. I know that every one of you has been working very hard uh, the last uh, couple of days, and I'm looking uh, for a beautiful face of a beautiful lady, um, and I'm looking for Sephora Robina. Sephora, where are you? There she is, wonderful. Now, Sephora is somebody who is doing a very difficult task, an incredibly difficult task, because you actually try an attempt, and I'm very sure that you will succeed, in summing up the last three days. Good luck. Bon chance. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to try and start off with a comment by one of the panelists on the very first day saying that there are a lot of you tweeting and retweeting what I'm saying, and I, and I have no control over that. So that is going to start off what I'm going to try to put into 10 minutes, what is, has been happening here the last three days. And um, I'm focusing on what has been tweeted and what has been happening in the blogosphere. So that was the very first comment. Media can't be controlled. People are twittering. People are looking and watching. And a lot of you have been doing that because the GMF hashtag has been one of the trends on Twitter and has ended up as one of the top five every day since Monday. <laughs> on the morning of the very first day, there were a lot of people tweeting from this event. They were welcoming people, the locals were welcoming the internationals, the internationals were welcoming other internationals. And in the first plenary, when we were talking about rating versus quality, the media caught between market pressure and the mission to educate. Like I said, the speaker Trevor Nkube got a lot of attention because of his comments saying that no one can control the media. Something else that has also been retweeted very often was the comment by Frank Josef Radermacher saying that he's reading the newspaper every day to try and figure out how they want to trick him. So it's quite controversial, and it was retweeted a lot. So people are thinking that maybe the media, you have to be very careful what you read, what you watch, what you listen to. But all in all, on that very first part, there was not a lively Twitter discussion going on. It was more that people were retwittering what the panelists were saying. It really took off uh, on Monday around 2 p.m. There was really a lively Twitter discussion. Uh, one of the workshops or the discussions that got a lot of Twitters was Google Workshop with the title, How Google and Others Shape Awareness and Education. There were a lot of issues that were being talked about and there was also a suggestion from the public that there should be a search engine by the public without any commercial interests to keep the information floor flow more transparent. And some of the Twitterers sitting on the floor also made their feelings known, saying that there wasn't enough space for such a popular workshop. So this is something maybe the organizers might think of the next time they're organizing their global media forum, how to allocate the space for the workshops. The boat trip on Monday was also very popular. You can be very sure that a lot of pictures ended up on Facebook and also on Twitter from the boat trip. On Tuesday morning, the arrival of Foreign Minister Guido Westerwelle started a real Twitter outbreak. There were a lot of people Twittering about that, and um, it was a little bit mixed. A lot of people were very pleased that they had the chance to see a high-profile minister talking here in Bonn to all uh, of the Global Media Forum uh, participants. But some also believe that he kind of avoided the question on the UN Security Council, 
The question was, how can the Security Council keep the peace when it is composed of the biggest producers of weapons? So this is something that has been, people have been talking about this quite a lot. But one of his quotes that was also retweeted a lot was, we have no natural resources, but we have knowledge. Of course, he was talking about Germany and how this is going to be a competition of knowledge and not about natural resources. The plenary on the second day, globalization, friend or foe of culture, diversity, and intercultural dialogue. And even though his birthday was the day before, but the Indonesian former president got a lot of tweets wishing him a very happy birthday. And a lot of Twitter users was, were also interested in the statement saying uh, from Heinrich Kraft that Europe has to do more to promote multicultural integration. On Tuesday midday, we had a record, another big record, because that, uh, there was a workshop that got the most tweets uh, in this whole global media forum, and it was one story, many media, transmedia storytelling. And it was documenting the Deutsche Welle multimedia project for German language learners called Juju sucht das Glück. Juju is looking for happiness. So apparently a lot of you were very interested in this and they were very happy with this panel because a lot of tweets came out of that panel. And people were also fascinated how multimedia storytelling works. A lot of them were surprised and questions were posted on Twitter, Facebook, and also posted, uh, talked about during the workshop. The plenary session today, this morning, hosted by Connie, about education and sustainable development, two sides of the same coin. The Twitter user especially loved social activist Dennis Goldberg. Many were retweeting him saying that education is not just math and physics, but also learning how to live with each other. And users agreed that education is the key, but many wanted to know what we can do as individuals. And one possible answer given during the panel was that we could motivate children to read more. Another floor comment that has been retweeted several times was that there is no point in saving children or talking about the Millennium Development Goals if there is no planet for them to live on. So, I'm trying to find my paper for the last panel. For the last panel, the fight for knowledge, opportunities and risk of educational work in conflict and crisis zones. Uh, a lot of you appreciated that there was a very international perspective to this panel. And people were asking, for example, what should be taught in conflict regions? And shouldn't the job be taken over by locals? Ms. Gani has answered this question by saying education is a very universal, universal issue and we need to join hands. It's, it's very difficult to sum up what has been happening here because there have been 50 workshops. We could, a lot of you can only attend one at a time, of course. Um, so what can be said about what has, happened, what has been happening here at the Global Media Forum? If we watch the blogosphere, if we watch what has, had, what has been happening on Twitter, at least what this Global Media Forum has helped, facilitated to do is to get people talking. That was absolutely fabulous. Could you just stay with me for one second? I might need you um, because um, I just had the same problem about falling leaves and the last page of the click competition got lost and it would be a terrible shame if I didn't uh, share that with you because uh, we had actually said since everybody sort of got involved and voted, we drew one of the names of the voters and if that person is still there, we can hand it over. That is, you could hand it over. Do we still have Donald Mzari? Mzire? Donald, come to the front, quickly. You're gonna have something to take back. Donald, where are you? There you are, come, come to the front quickly. And could you do the honors of handing that over? 
And maybe both of you stand in the middle so that we can actually see that the award, that the prize is being given. Okay, so, sir, this is what you just won, simply because you clicked and you did the right thing. Well, the photo competition. Wow. I, I hope you did. <laughs> yes, you did. Wonderful. So, you know, one of many, this is your prize. I know it's, it's, it's sort of one-sided, so you actually have to produce good films to actually watch uh, on that DVD player, right? Okay, wonderful. Have a good trip home. Not yet, not yet. Thank you so much. Um, now, I just uh, walk over here and say, ladies and gentlemen, he would have done the opening had he been here. He did uh, the second day, and now he does the closing, the final words, wrap up. Dr. Eric Betterman, the Yes, you are a doctor now, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Director General of the Deutsche Welle. We're looking forward to your closing remarks. Thank you very much, not for the doctor, but for the conducting of this meeting. You have done a wonderful job. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we have had three days of intense conversation. Education is a human right for everyone, as stated by the Article 26 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Enabling everyone to claim this right is one of the great challenges of globalization. And it's up to the media to help people to do that. History has taught us to respect the value and rights of every human being, regardless of age, gender, religious faith, culture, or language. Unique individuals shape their society, societies. It is the individuals who cause history to be written. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights explicitly postulates the importance of every individual. It gives every one of us rights and freedoms. To me, freedom means being able to choose from different options without internal or external restraints. Individual freedom means being able to take advantage of opportunities, for example, in education. Individual freedom means also that you take over a specific responsibility for the society where you live in. Many cultures are based on the premise that people want to educate themselves and on their desire to progress and achieve the best of their themselves and their surroundings, to make a contribution to society. That's also how I see the conference we have just chaired. And I think we can really be honored that the former president of Indonesia, Joseph Habibi, has joined this conference. Because if you have looked into the history of Indonesia, you know that under his presidency, the changes in this respect of the human rights and of the development of individuals has started. Hopefully, our plenary discussions, the 50 workshops, and the countless conversations between sessions have given us all fresh insights and ideas. One of the many great opportunities in this event is that we can learn from one another. In one form or another, what we have heard and talked about concerns all of us in our daily work. Here we can look 
at these matters from new perspectives. As my colleague, Sephora Robina has just told us, key points of our discussions are already resounding around the globe, throughout old and new forms of media. And Sephora, if you allow me, I make a personal remark concerning our foreign minister uh, and his diplomatic answer to the questions what is your perspective to the United Nations Security Council? First of all, also for the Germans being present here, I must tell you, or must tell everyone, that was a big speech of our foreign minister. And if it's allowed to say, as a German, I was really proud about him. But he is involved in this discussion of reforming the United Nations. And I think everyone will understand that not in such a publicity, with representatives from all over the media, he can put on the table what is real thought, how he thinks the United Nations should be reformed. This was disturb every efforts for a real change of this world institution. That's my only remark. I'm happy that all the Twitters have followed our discussion, but also for them, being outside of this plenary, I think it's necessary to understand that someone who is in function has also take care that is not disturbing his own strategy for change. Social media platforms have informed us of the topics that move you and your networks most. And I am certain that this will inspire especially the journalists among us to pick up the topics and stories should, that should be told, so that the media lives up to its responsibility. The goal is to distribute education opportunities more equally around the world. We, at the International Broadcast of Germany, Deutsche Welle, will do just that. We have told you about projects in our programming and in the Deutsche Welle Academy. More are being planned. I'm quite happy that this morning we have assigned the MOU between the, how my colleague who has joined the last panel, Daryl Colson, the president of the Wartburg College in Iowa, that we will go further in the cooperation between our academy and this respective university, and we even have integrated the support of the University of Applied Science of Bonn Rhein Sieg. I invite all broadcasters to join us in championing the global task of education. For instance, through project partnerships and co productions. It's our aim, and I think all of us have learned this during those days the aim of journalists, of media, is to give information and education. Information is a precondition for education, for giving people the chance that they are educated and understand what it means to live together in a society, in a free, voluntary society. Ladies and gentlemen, this year we are celebrating a small anniversary, the fifth birthday of the Global Media Forum. Our idea has picked up much greater momentum than we could ever have imagined. It started five years ago. It's roughly seven, eight hundred participants. During this meeting, we came to the maximum. More than 2,000 participants have joined the discussion during this meeting. And I'm a little bit proud, not only that we have had this idea, that so many colleagues, participants, have used this platform of exchanging views. We are not speaking together to make a final resolution. That's also the question, who has which mandate? 
but nevertheless to be together, to use a platform of exchange news, that is the value of this Global Media Forum. What pleased me especially is that so many of you have accompanied us for all those years, five years. Ideas have been developed here, joint projects have been launched, and new friendships formed. Next year, we will mark a bigger anniversary because the International Broadcast of Germany, the Deutsche Welle, turns 60 in 2013. So you can count it, we were founded in 1953. We look forward to celebrating this with you at the next Global Media Forum. Consider yourself warmly invited. The topic for next year conference is the future of growth, new economies, and the media. Please be our guest from the 17th to 19th, write it down, 17th to 19th uh, of June 2013. For now, for now, I would like to thank all of you, all our partners, all our partner organization, the speakers, the team of organizers. And if you allow me, I especially want to thank my colleagues from the Deutsche Welle and from the Deutsche Welle Media Service, which have prepared and organized, and I think you felt yourself as being hosts here in Bonn, hosts of those of my colleagues. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you that you have joined this Global Media Forum. Let's stay in touch. And as we just heard, it's easier than it was 10, 20 years ago. Today we can do it. Let's stay in touch. See you here again next year, 17th to 19th of June. Thank you for coming to Bonn. Safe trip back. Thank you for contributing to this conference. Thank you very much.